Good day ladies and germs, Connor here from C Dubs Media, back with another video. And today I've got a video for all you Canon PowerShot V10 users. Now these are the best settings for you for recording video in different environments on the Canon PowerShot V10, which is what I'm filming on now. What do you think of this image? I think it doesn't look too bad. This is in my studio environment, so it's a controlled environment. Still looks a little bit overcooked on one side, a little bit bright. And obviously the windows behind me are over, overexposed, but I'm trying to expose for my face. So let me just dial down the lighting a little bit. That's starting to look a bit nicer, a little bit softer. Now this is in full manual mode, or what you would say is full manual mode for the Canon PowerShot V10. So my current settings are 4K 25 frames per second, my shutter speed is 1 50th. I'm at f2.8 because I do want to try and get some separation between the background and me. I want to have that little bit of blurriness in the background, it looks a little bit better, a little bit more cinematic-y if you get my drift. And it is on no stabilization mode, so it is stabilization is off and it gives me this wide field of view. So I'm actually only about 10 inches away from the camera, but it looks like I'm maybe two meters away from it. That gives me the opportunity to get some good audio recorded on this as well because I'm standing close to the microphone and so I'm getting a pretty decent image and pretty decent audio. Now I do also have the Rode NTG4 Plus hooked up here, recording into the Zoom H6 handy recorder. So I'll just quickly switch between the two audio settings and you can decide for yourself how good or bad the Canon PowerShot V10 is. I think it's pretty good, especially for when you're outdoors filming. It does it all automatically. You don't have to fuck around with it. You don't, it's the last thing you want to do and look let's be serious we're not making hollywood blockbuster videos here we're making short videos to share online with our friends and family on social media and i think this image looks pretty good and if i'm sharing this image with my friends and family on social media i don't think they're going to say wow that video looks like shit connor i think they're going to be enjoying what the content is rather than judging the quality of the video, which says that it's good enough. Now, when filming in manual mode, you can go into the settings tab and decide what ISO and f-stop and shutter speed you can shoot on as well. So it gives you some control there, which I think is pretty handy, but that's pretty much it. You don't really need to do much else. It's on a tripod, it's locked off, you've controlled the environment, Nothing really is going to change, and I think it looks pretty awesome. Now, if I was going to be filming outdoors, my settings would change, and I'm just going to quickly change them now, and then come straight back to you. Okay, have a guess what settings we're in now. Hmm, we're actually in full auto mode, and this is pretty cool. You've got like one setting to change on the display as it's recording. Everything else is done for you, which I think most of us are going to be in. But it does look pretty bright. I actually like the manual settings video that I was filming in just before. I think it gave a much better vibe to the video. But when you're out running and gunning and walking through markets or doing little vlogs here and there for your family and friends, you probably just want to have it in auto mode. And the only thing you can change while it's recording is your brightness level. So right now it's at zero. So I'm talking maybe... Um, it's like auto exposure, you know what I mean? So if I go into the settings, I can dial it down to, that's minus four, maybe a little bit too dark. Let's go minus two. That's probably the right settings for this environment. But that's all you would have to worry about recording in auto mode. Everything else is done for you. But I think the colors look great. There's typical Canon sort of colors here. They have a nice, saturation and the contrast is good um, the highlights aren't too blown out in terms of what you're looking at here in my face it's exposing correctly to me not to the background where it's really bright it's actually knows that hey exposed to this dude so i like it let's just have a look and see what happens when i get out of the way of the frame and see how it exposes for the shot then 
And as you can see, it actually changed the settings a little bit. It's a lot darker in here now, and the exposer is trying to expose for the windows outside. And I'm gonna step back into the frame, and the exposure is gonna lift for my face slowly. And there we go, I'm exposed correctly. So a little bit slow, but it does the job. Now let's check out stabilized. Okay, so this is what they've called IS Stabilize Mode. And this is gonna be good for when you're out running and gunning and filming videos on the go. As you can see, it's cropped in a lot on the image. I'm a lot more closer to the camera, although I'm not really, but it's just punched in to give the ability to stabilize it. Now, if you're locked off on a tripod or something, you don't need that stabilizer on. But if you're doing walking, talking head videos, vlogs, then yes, you're gonna want some stabilization. I think it does a pretty good job. Now I think things like GoPro and DJI, their stabilization is next level. And so is your smartphone, like your iPhone and your Pixel 8 Pro and your Samsung. The stabilization on those phones is amazing. However, if you look at say a six to $700 phone, and I'm talking Aussie dollars here, then your stabilization is gonna be mediocre. And I think the Canon PowerShot V10 steps in at that price point and offers a much better image, a much better video quality, and much better stabilization for your money. And here's some shots of me in Vietnam. You can see I was on a mo motorbike and this footage was really stable and not bad as well for the type of quality it is. Now it is a one inch sensor, which does make it hard to get some background separation from the foreground, but it does a good enough job and much better than most phones in that aspect. And we still have the amazing Canon colors. So this is IS mode, so image stabilization turned on, it is enhanced, and it's supposed to be pretty stable. Me, walking, handheld, no tripod, no mini tripod, just me holding it about a foot away from my face. So even though it's cropped in, we still got a pretty wide image. I like it. I think it looks good, the colors are good, and follow in the settings, there's the bright sun killing me now for the sun mode like this you would go in and put on ND filters so here I am now back in the same position with the sun blaring in my face with the ND filter on still in IS mode the sun smacking me right in the face and it's well composed I like it looks good now I do always think that you should film you should stop and set up your camera and not walk when you're filming, but I know that vloggers like to walk around and look pretty awesome when they're doing their walking and filming. So if you do need to, I think this footage is good enough. However, I would always recommend that you stop, do your filming in the location you're in, then continue walking. All right, now I'm back in full auto mode. Just sort of jump in quickly, show you what auto mode is like out here. Like I said, this is probably the mode you want to be in if you're just run and gun. And how wide is this? This is me filming an arm's length. Stabilization off. So it might be a little bit jerky. And this is how you turn stabilization off and on. Pretty basic. Now you can also turn on the auto leveler, which will level out the footage for you if you're not paying attention or you know you're a bit of a rough run and gun sort of a filmmaker. So you can turn that on, it'll level everything out for you. I tend to don't use it, I just tend to use my eye, but most of my footage is shit. So you go with your flow there, do what you think is best for you but you can turn on auto leveler. Now you can also turn on your grid display to give you that, um, you know, so you can help you with your composition if you need it on. I tend to have that on with all my cameras, even on my smartphones. It just helps me set up my, uh, my view, my image, my composition better. So here's how you can do that. Um, it does add to it. Um, and also if you're not using auto leveler, then the grid display can help a lot. Okay, so we're back in the studio. I've been outdoors doing a little bit of filming as you just saw. And now I want to look at, what's this called? There's a bit of a mouthful here. It is called Smooth Skin Movie Shooting Mode. Whatever, but 
it's supposed to smooth me out a little bit. I don't know if it does or doesn't. I don't know if I need that. Nah, I probably need it more than anyone. But smooth skin movie shooting mode. I don't think it looks too bad. I guess it might be for you if it's always important on how you look. But for me, it's really not that important. Uh, but as you can see, it's a nice image. I can make it dull. Well, not dull, not just not quite as bright, a little bit more cinematic or a little bit more moody. So you can play around with it. I think it looks pretty good, but then again, I don't really care about it either. Now you do also have these different types of modes or creative filters. They all look a little bit different, a little bit fancy, a little bit creative. You tell me which one you like. Mm, I don't mind this one. This one looks all right. A little bit blue, a little bit of a blue look. It's a bit space agey maybe, except for me, not quite as space agey. But I like this look. Blue. What about this one? This is called Retro Green. I don't know if I like it. Green is sort of always a little bit pukey. Hang on, let me just line up my image a little bit. It's um, not really center, is it? There we go. That's a little bit more centered. And green. Then we have sepia. It's a typical sepia. What do you think of sepia? Anyway, these are all the different creative filters you can use as well and there's a couple other things I just want to quickly show you one is you can change the color tone so this is really warm and this is really cold so you can just do that with a slider it's really simple make it look warmer or colder and this is what they're saying is smack bang somewhere in the middle but still in sepia hang on a minute oh my god look at this one I keep thinking like the, I thought there was only eight but it looks like there's 12 maybe more Anyway, this one, I forgot the name of this one. I'll put it up on the screen now, but that, I don't mind that. That's a little bit funky. So as you can see, there's a lot of settings. It's not just point and shoot, really, with the Canon PowerShot V10. You can really play around with it and get a pretty nice looking image. I'm really digging it. So there is actually 15 different images or different creative filters you can use on the Canon PowerShot V10. Not bad. So there you go. It's not all just point and shoot. I do think it is quite capable. But for me, it's about going back to old faithful manual mode, 25 frames per second, 150th shutter speed, f2.8, and ISO, I think right now is 125. I think this is a nice image, and I think it's a pretty good image for a $600 video camera. Now, it is not as good as a $2,000 iPhone or Pixel phone or Samsung phone, but this is 600 bucks. It's hard to complain about the quality coming out of it. Anyway, that's it. What did you think about this video? Comments down below. Thank you all for watching, and I will catch you in the next video. Check ya. Check ya, motherfuckers. Check ya. Check ya. Check ya. Check ya. Check ya.